It's 11.30 on a Tuesday and I'm staring at my chemistry teacher. My face pale, my eyes wide open. Quiet giggling from the world behind me. My ears are ringing, but her words cut through the fog. Henry, if you fail this exam, how are you going to survive medical school? Think about it carefully. A wave of fear and anger slams into me. Am I really just not smart enough? I've been studying for weeks, and yet like this, I will never make my parents proud. But if hard work wasn't enough, then I needed something else, something deeper, something that actually worked. Because if effort alone doesn't guarantee success, then maybe the problem wasn't me. Maybe the problem was the way I was learning. So I started searching, not just for answers, but for understanding. I spent countless nights buried in research papers, obsessively dissecting studies. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, and then one ordinary morning in the shower, a single sentence appeared in front of my mind's eye. A sentence that would change my entire life. Even now I get goosebumps when I think about it. The brain is not built for modern education. It is built for survival. The whole time, it was not my fault. No one in this room is too lazy or too dumb to achieve high academic success. The real problem? None of us were ever taught in a way our brain actually understands. But how were our brain designed to learn? The answers were not in more motivation, more discipline, or more time at the desk. The answers was hidden in the way humans have survived for thousands of years. And suddenly, everything made sense. I went from struggling to study for hours to learning more in just under 10 minutes. Because I finally understood how to use my brain the way it was meant to be used. And today, I'm going to show you exactly how so you can copy this new strategy into your life. But first, we need to go back in time a little bit. Imagine you're standing in the open steppe 35,000 years ago. The sun sinks towards the horizon, a light breeze brushes against your face, and then a noise in the tall grass. Your heartbeat spikes, your muscle tense, every sense sharpens. The next minutes could decide your entire fate. So your brain must act. And it does. In a split second, it takes a decision. If you survive this, it won't just be remembered. It will rewire your brain. Strengthening pathways, updating old patterns, ensuring that the next time your response will be even faster. This is what your brain evolved for. Not to memorize textbooks, not to store endless knowledge. Its true mission is to keep you alive, to manage energy wisely. Because no matter how much changed over the past 35,000 years, one thing remains the same. The way our brain learns. But we are no longer standing barefoot in the open steppe. We no longer hunt to survive, or at least not in the way our ancestors did. Instead, we are told that real success means accumulating as much information as possible. But here's the problem. Academic learning, as we know it, goes against the very nature of our brain. We are taught in rigid, linear structures, isolated facts, neatly arranged topics, stripped out of real-world meaning. The assumption? that memory is a storage system, that facts could be simply filed away, waiting to be retrieved. And that assumption made sense at the time. Because when the moder modern education system was invented back in the Industrial Revolution, there was only one clear goal, to produce as many efficient workers as possible. So learning outcomes had to be as standardized and as measurable as possible. But knowledge cannot be simply installed like bricks in a wall. Knowledge is not a product, it's a process. Learning doesn't happen in a straight line. It's not a book, 
It's not a list and it's not a formula. It's a living, breathing river, a vast system with countless branches. Information doesn't just sit, it flows, it intertwines, it reshapes what was already there. Some of it deepens the stream, some of it evaporates, some of it gets lost in the current. And here's the secret. Instead of fighting against the currents of your own mind, you can learn to write them. So I developed a simple method that mimics how the brain naturally absorbs information. It's the same system our ancestors have unknowingly used to survive for thousands of years. And it's made up of three principles. Recall, connect, transform. Let's first start with recall. Who of you ever got lost in a new city without Google Maps? Uh, raise your hands. You probably still all remember where this happened. But why? Because when you get lost, your brain enters an active state. It poses an unsolved problem. It searches for all possible helpful clues to solve it. This exact mechanism is what we use to boost our learning efficiency by simply starting with open recall. So before you know anything about a topic, test yourself first. This might sound counterintuitive, but research shows that we remember things better when we first struggle to recall them. So testing yourself is the first step. It tells your brain, this will be important, keep searching. Just like your ancestors did when they were scanning the horizon and their surrounding for possible dangers, your brain learns better when it is actively searching. Now to step two. Now that your brain is in an open state, it will receive input all the time. But where does this information go? Your brain is not a storage unit. It's a network. So every new piece of information is either anchored into the existing system or washed away by the currents. Think about a river. If raindrops fall on dry ground, they evaporate. But if they reach a flowing river, they strengthen its flow. They become part of something greater. And this is why some memories feel like burned into your mind, like my chemistry teacher words back then, not because I consciously memorized them, but because they were tied to deep emotion. So how do we use this power deliberately? Every new piece of information should be connected to a personal story or to a future outcome that directly affects you. So turn facts into feelings. Ask yourself, how could this information maybe even save a life? By the way, this is how I remember this speech. Now to step three. Recalling and connecting information helps you to keep it in your mind. But to truly understand it, you must change its shape. Our ancestors didn't just store knowledge, they adapted to it. Their brains transformed raw experiences into survival instincts. So when they found a new strategy to hunt that actually worked, they didn't just remember it. They built rituals around it. They told stories about it. And this is exactly what we must do with knowledge today. But how do we transform knowledge? Force yourself to go from a linear structure, as you know it from the books, to a real network. Try to reshape it reframe the information, build a connection, build a flow. This is how knowledge comes from being just an external part to becoming you. This is a cycle. The river never stops. It's one continuous flow. It's not three separate steps. Recall opens the river by activating your brain to search for meaning. Connection strengthens it by preventing knowledge from being washed away and transform, it reshapes the entire riverbed by turning information into who you are. With these three pillars that I call the river method, you can absorb vast amounts of knowledge in just under 10 minutes. 
So start with two minutes of open recall. Try to test yourself. Let your brain search for meaning. Then go over to three minutes, finding all possible connections to already existing knowledge. Try to stick it to deep emotions. And then finally, use the five remaining minutes to draw. Yes, to draw. And I give you a short glimpse into my brain. Please don't feel overwhelmed because uh, I'm not an artist. But build a map with a flow like this. So you change your perspectives. You go from the linear structure that we all know to a real network. So guide the flow of the river. Back then, sitting in that classroom, I felt powerless. But today, today I can tell my younger self one thing that it would have really needed to hear. And maybe some of you need to hear that too. Dear Henry, your brain was never broken. It was never the problem. The problem was the system that made you believe you were not enough. But now you know the truth. Your mind is powerful beyond measure. It was built to adapt, to grow, to thrive. You're not limited by talent, by genetics, or by what anyone has ever told you. The only limit is the belief that you have one. So don't let anyone dim your light. Don't let anyone tell you what you can or cannot achieve. Keep going. You have no idea yet how far you will go. But I can tell you one thing. You proved this teacher wrong. And now to everyone listening in this exact moment. Prove them all wrong. Thank you.